Although Kindle is the leading e-reader device on the planet, there is a learning curve to it. If you want to use this device to its full potential, then it's important to know the main gestures and most helpful settings. Let's get into how to use Kindle so you can enjoy the elevated reading experience it offers. After turning on your Kindle for the first time, we'll start by selecting the device's language and region. Once complete, select whether you'd like to set up the Kindle on your phone or the device itself. In this tutorial, I'll set up the Kindle on the device. If you'd like to start downloading books right away, go ahead and join a Wi-Fi network on your Kindle. However, you can easily complete this step later if you aren't near a Wi-Fi signal. On the next screen, you'll be asked to register your Kindle with an Amazon account. If you already have an Amazon account, I'd recommend using that one since it already has your billing information set up for buying books. Not to mention, Prime members also have access to Prime Reading, which provides access to thousands of books, comics, and magazines for free. If you want to set up a brand new Amazon account though, that's an option too. Since I have an Amazon account already, I'll use that to register this Kindle. After logging in, click Next. The next screen gives you the option to sign up for a Goodreads account which is a free community for avid readers to discuss books and share recommendations with each other. Feel free to skip this for now. You can always come back later and sign up. The next offer gives you the opportunity to sign up for Audible, the world's largest marketplace for audiobooks. Feel free to give it a try if you're interested. And that's it. Congratulations. The initial setup is complete and you'll now see the Kindle home screen. Before we get into how the Kindle interface works, let's cover what the physical button does beside the charging port. Pressing this button puts your device to sleep and wakes it up. If you hold it down for five seconds, you'll have the option to reset the Kindle as well. To wake your device, simply press the power button and swipe up. Now let's focus on the Kindle home screen. There are nine sections. Display and network settings. This gives you access to airplane mode, Bluetooth, dark mode, brightness, and screen warmth settings. Search bar. Searches the Kindle store and downloads on your device. The Kindle store icon. This allows you to browse free and paid Kindle books to download. Second menu. Includes reading lists, Goodreads, Amazon Kids, web browser, and settings. Recently viewed books in your library. This one's pretty straightforward. It'll show your recently downloaded books as well as your recently read books. Book recommendations. This is where you'll find books recommended to you from the Kindle store. Home, this brings you back to the main screen you're looking at. Most recent book, this jumps you back to your most recently read book. Library, this will open up your Kindle library with all your available books. On the main screen, you can scroll down to view more of the recommended books by either sliding your finger upward on the screen or by clicking the arrows on the scroll bar. Lastly, as you browse books in the Kindle store, you can always get back to the main screen by clicking the X icon in the top right corner. Now that we know our way around the Kindle home screen, how do we actually get books onto this device? Kindle makes it easy to download books, whether you download them on the Kindle itself, from Amazon, or from your local library. We'll cover each of those methods now. Starting with how to download books on the Kindle device itself. There are three ways to start this process. You can search for a book title using the search bar on the main screen. Additionally, you can click the shopping cart icon on the main screen and begin browsing for books. Lastly, you can select one of the recommended books shown on the main screen. If you have Kindle Unlimited, keep an eye out for the badge above titles in the store. This means those books can be downloaded for free with your membership. Once you find a book you're interested in, click on it to view more details. On this screen, you'll see how much the book costs, user reviews, page count, and whether there's an audio version available. After purchasing a book, it'll charge the primary payment method on your linked Amazon account, whether that's a gift card, credit card, etc. And your book will appear in your library within a few seconds. Next, we'll cover how to download books on Amazon via computer, phone, or tablet. To download books from Amazon, simply visit the website on your preferred device and then search for the desired book title. Once you find the book you want, select Kindle as the version and click Buy Now. After purchasing the book, it will be automatically delivered to your Kindle. Keep in mind, this could take a minute or so. If several minutes go by and you don't see the book in your Kindle library, first try syncing your device via the network and display settings. 
If that doesn't work, search for the book on your device using the search bar and it should show up with a book icon next to it. The third method we'll cover is how to download books from a library to your Kindle. If you have a library card already, you can download books from that library for free using Libby directly onto your Kindle device. Keep in mind, there are limited book quantities available to be borrowed similar to physical copies. To get started, let's download the free Libby app on your Apple or Android device. Once downloaded, search for your library and input your library card number. Once processed, you'll be able to browse ebooks available at your library. If the book you want is unavailable, you can join the waitlist until the copy is ready for you. To borrow an available book, simply click the borrow button and you'll be sent to Amazon. Then select which Kindle device to send the library book to and it should arrive within a few seconds. Unlike borrowing physical books from the library, ebooks are automatically returned on their due date, so there's never any late fees. Reading on a Kindle not only feels natural, but it elevates the reading experience due to the simple gestures and helpful settings. When reading on a Kindle, there are five main gestures to navigate a book. If you tap on the left side of the screen, it'll turn to the previous page. If you tap on the right side of the screen, it will turn to the next page. Tap on the top of the screen to access the reading menu that includes returning to the home screen, font size settings, bookmarks, highlights, and more. Swipe down from the top of the screen to access display and network settings, which includes brightness adjustments, dark mode, and screen warmth adjustments. Swipe up from the bottom of the screen to jump between chapters. Within display settings, there are countless adjustments possible, allowing you to configure the perfect reading display. If you want to change the font size on your Kindle, tap the top of the screen and then select the A symbol. Another screen will pop up and you'll have the ability to change almost everything about the page, including the font family, margin size, font size, and line spacing. One of my favorite features about the Kindle is how easy it is to look up a word you're not familiar with. Simply press down on the word you want to look up and the definition will appear after a few seconds. If you don't have a dictionary already installed, you can download one for free in your library. After doing so, go to Settings, Language and Dictionaries, Dictionaries, and then select your default dictionary. Another really helpful feature when reading is how to add highlights and notes on the Kindle. If you want to highlight a section of your book or add a note, simply hold your finger down on the section of interest. Then you can slide the brackets as needed to capture the section you want. With Kindle, you have the choice to highlight only or highlight and leave a note in your book. After leaving a note or highlight, it will be annotated in the text itself and in the notes and highlight index of your book where you can view them all in one place. It's also easy to export all the notes to your Amazon account via email. This would be really helpful if you wanted to print out your reading notes to study or bring them to a book club meeting. I hope this guide was helpful for you and I'd love to know in the comments section what your overall impression of the Kindle is so far. Thanks for watching.